What's good, everybody, and welcome back to the channel for a rebuild here on Madden NFL 23. As you can see, we are starting here with a zero overall team, but this is no ordinary zero overall rebuild. I am finally getting to a rebuild that was suggested to me in the comments a while back um, for a series idea. The, the idea came from a subscriber by the name of Monkey50. We just sent me up in the comments saying that there was a series idea if I was interested um, that would be challenging. Of course, I'm always interested in a challenge. So I asked what the challenge was going to be all about. And he came up with an idea that was five rules. And of course, the suggestion was originally for a series idea. And I think in the future, maybe in Madden 24, I could turn this into a series or a mini series. But we're just to the point in the Madden 23 cycle where I don't want to start a whole new series. Just a lot of the interest in the game has understandably died down as the NFL season is really in kind of the lull before training camp. Not a lot going on with football at the moment. So I understand it. But I wanted to give this rebuild a try just because I told the subscriber that I would do it. Um, it's well past due. And if this succeeds, it's kind of a one-off video like we're doing here today. We can keep this going and it could become a staple of the channel for sure. Maybe like a post um, draft only franchise. Cause this year we did two. I don't imagine we'll be doing that in the future. So I think this could be something that could kind of fill the void of the second draft only franchise that we've been doing. It's certainly possible. So if you like this franchise idea, Make sure to tell me in the comments and in the likes. So let's get to the rules that were brought to me for this challenge rebuild. The first, I cannot do any trades that involve players. So that uh, removes any possibility of me quickly, you know, improving the zero overall roster. Second, I have to pay players the most expensive contract the extremely player-friendly option. Now, this wasn't specified in the rule, but I'm going to interpret this as, as I cannot sign any free agents after the draft because after the draft, you just get a set number, right? You cannot pay them the most, the extremely player-friendly option. So because of that, I will not be paying any players in post-UDFA, post-draft UDFA because if I have to sign everybody to extremely player friendly and it's not an option in that time period, it just feels like I wouldn't be following that rule. Three, the team starts off with a roster of zero overalls. There we go. We're starting off with a zero overall roster of the Falcons. That's the first one that I could find on the Madden vaults. Fourth, only allowed to draft projected UDFAs. Now this one's gonna be, I think, the one that really makes it the most difficult. Like. I've proven that I can build a roster, you know, without really using much of UD, uh, without much of free agency starting from nothing, right? With my draft only franchises that I've done here on Men 23. But the fact that now even the draft I'm beginning significantly nerfed, that is what's going to make this maybe an impossible franchise to build a Super Bowl contender. And then the fifth one, you can make this roll is what uh, I was told in, in the comments. And so I was given creative liberty here. Not like the first four rules aren't hard enough for me. I was considering maybe making the fifth rule something that would make the franchise easier. Like, hey, every year you get to choose a player and dev them up once. But what's the fun in that? This is a challenge franchise. So the fifth rule that I'm creating is I can only sign players with at least yellow interest. That counts for both free agency and for re-sign. So if I find a sick UDFA and he just doesn't have interest in re-signing because he wants to play co close to home or whatever, sucks to suck. I'm getting him for four years. So um, I, and the reason I like this as the fifth rule is because with the rule two where I have to play players extremely player friendly, if I was signing like a guy who had red interest, I could be like, you know what? It's not that bad. I'd probably have to sign up to extremely player friendly anyway. But no, I'm only getting guys that are interested in us and I'm still overpaying them, which just I think makes the extreme overpay 
hurts even more. So those are our five rules for the franchise. Shout out to Monkey50 for the idea. And I hope it succeeds on the channel because I'd love to continue this in future Maddens as well. Again, maybe even as a mini series or even a full fledged series in the future. Um, I will also be relocating this team just because if we're not going to have any original Falcons, what's the point of being the Falcons? Let's have some fun and relocate. I might even use this to scout who I want to relocate for it. my man 24 team. So if we relocate and I'm kind of liking the jerseys, might be our man 24 draft only franchise team. But let's hop in to really offseason one because this is a zero overall team. We're not really invested in anyone on this roster. All right, here we are, end of year one. It's going to be Cowboys versus Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Oof. I like to see the Cowboys in the Super Bowl. If you can't tell from the jerseys behind me. Um, I guess we could see how we did. Um, spoiler alert, we're a zero overall team. So it wasn't good. Allowed over 100 points for his two games. Hey, got our first points on the board. Week six, got a field goal up and in. We did that a few times. One touchdown on the year came in week 16. But uh, only losing by 58. It looks like our best. Oh, no, here. Didn't even lose by 50 points to the Bears. That's embarrassing for the Bears. But um, there's, a, there's a starting point. There, you can only go up from here. Let's see. I think the... CPU did sign a couple of non-zero overall players. So Cam Newton ended up playing for us through the one touchdown on the year. Um, also was the only guy able to get positive rushing yards. All the other guys, you know, 86 for negative 194. I think this guy's got a future in the league, if we're being honest. Uh, the one touchdown was caught by Calvin Ridley. That's awesome. Uh, it's just because he wasn't supposed to be playing. Not bad blocking there, but from our tackles, if we're being honest. Six and a half sacks at zero overall is kind of nasty. Steven Weatherly, get him in your franchises, ladies and gentlemen. And then Young Wei Ku. Is this guy actually zero overall? Yeah, he didn't miss a field goal. Nice. Even at zero overall. And this zero overall punter averaged 50 yards a punt. Dude, I can't even get my punter to average 50 yards a punt. What is going on? Anyway, that's season one. Only can go up from here. Um, it's going to be a long, long battle. But hopefully we can get it done. And here's the first look at what our new... Uh, jerseys will look like in this franchise we were, are going to be the london black knights i think these jerseys honestly look really clean all blacks my one complaint about them as we go to see them on cam newton i don't like the little red bar across the shoulder heads too much i wish i feel like if it didn't have that this jersey would be pretty sick now, if i'm being honest i am leaning towards uh london for my man 24 expansion draft only franchise mostly because i feel like it's actually semi-realistic uh relocation destination is you know We've been playing games in London for years now. And also there's two London jerseys that actually have the captain's patches in like a respectable spot on the jerseys. So I didn't have any captains in my express franchise because the, exp the captain's patches actually legitimately made the jerseys look worse. And I didn't want to make my captains look worse. That just was kind of intuitive. But anyway, um, London Black Knights is in the mix. There's another one that I also think could certainly be there. Um, kind of just depends on the color scheme that I'm looking to go for, but 
Let's hop in to our first free agency. Remember, we can only play pay players with extremely player-friendly contracts. One guy that I think might be worth even extremely overpaying here is Derwin James. Just 27 years old, 95 overall. Looks like this roster is pretty early because it is before Derwin James re-signed and got taken out of the free agency pool. I'm fine with it though. I'm not gonna try to make this rebuild realistic and not sign guys who under their teams are free agency. It's hard enough. When I find a guy who has at least yellow interest and I think is worth the extremely player-friendly contract, I'm just gonna go ahead and try to sign him. So Derwin James gets the first contract offer from the team. Partially because the corner class is so bad this year, which I'll show you in a minute. We, I will review the class a little bit. Um, I'm going to give an offer to Sean Murphy Bunting. Only 26 years old, so room to grow. Um, the extremely player friendly isn't super expensive, and he has full interest in us. So I'm like fairly confident he's going to sign with us. I'm kind of using the same logic here. Greedy Williams, young with room to grow and extremely player friendly. I guess it's very, there's no such thing as extremely player friendly, but you, you get it. It's the highest pre done contract you can do. It's only just like over 5 million a year. I think that could potentially be a steal for us for Greedy Williams. Just because the very player friendly offer is less than 4 million a year for Caden Smith, we're gonna do it. He's got some solid blocking ability. And so, 26 years old as well. Don't know how I feel about this one, but we're going to get Blake Cashman just because another pretty bad position, I think, in the post UDFA this year is off ball linebacker. There's just not a lot of options. The options that were there were decent, but um, that'll be my first five offers for. Free agency here, really doing uh, a lot in the secondary here. Our three kind of quote unquote big gets are going to be in the secondary and then didn't really like the options in on offense. Honestly, the fact that we're kind of restricted by getting people with yellow interest or more has kind of um, hurt us. It hasn't hurt us with running back, but I feel like running back is one of the positions that you should just be saving money on in a franchise like this if you have to overpay everybody. You know, there's already the argument in the NFL that you shouldn't pay running backs. I think in this franchise, it's even, you know, exacerbated. Where I think normally in men, paying a running back is fine. Spending high draft capital on a running back is fine because good running backs make a bigger impact than um, they do maybe in real life. But also the guys like Tony Pollard, he's not going to be like great in in a man simulation if there was like a 90 overall running back maybe maybe but let's see who wants to come to the squad players have evaluated their offers and all five come i'm not surprised we decided to pay a bunch of money i don't know why sean murphy bunting's interest all of a sudden went to zero he was Full, right? I didn't cheat. What is it? So I guess we had a mentor and now we don't? I don't understand that, honestly. It was it was full green when we offered him. So didn't cheat on that one. I'm going to give myself credit for that. I might want to uh, sign somebody with a mentor tag, though, just so that he can stay green. All right. Couldn't find a mentor corner with yellow interest in us. That rule that I created myself has really started to come back and bite me. Let's start to preview this draft class. Of course, I can only draft projected UDFAs. I just want to give a quick minute to shout out this guy, Terrell Blake. I think Terrell Drake, excuse me. This guy, I think, is going to be generational. A power, A finesse, A tackle, B block shed, elite strength, great speed. A awareness, A to C hit power. Injury and stamina aren't in a good spot, but holy hell, this guy looks nutty. 
And this is really sad because I haven't seen a generational defensive tackle in Madden 23 yet. The fact that I finally see one and I can't draft him makes this process even a little bit worse. Now, for the players that we can draft, I have 46 players on my board. The bar is set a lot lower than it is uh, for people who make the board and this compared to the usual, but my favorite quarterback is Hudson Tennant. He's got solid throw power, not going to have much speed to him, but he's got two B accuracies, A under pressure, B on the run, C awareness. That's a UDFA quarterback? Sign me up. He's probably playing quarterback for us next year. Uh, next favorite is Martin Guerrero here, mostly just because he's going to be able to move around. He's not going to have much of an arm, but accuracies are going to be decent. Oh, D awareness is probably what puts him behind um, Tenant here for me. Uh, for running back, uh, they all suck, but I think um, Alani Winslow might be my favorite. He's got a little bit of athleticism, C break tackle, C truck. He's going to have some catching ability as well. Um, Cordell here. Johnson has some speed to him and some potential for good blocking with A to C. Lead block and run block. For wide receiver, this is the position that we focus scout us. We got them at 100%. These are the two best guys, and so I plan to draft both of them. They've got some speed that they'll give us on the outside to hopefully help our quarterback that will be doomed when we draft him this year. <laughs> There's no shot our quarterback does well. Um, he's going to be even in like a worse position than our, our draft only quarterbacks probably because we don't have good rookies to put around him and we literally the only thing we've got on offense is a 68 overall tight end so um in terms of offensive linemen i think the guys that i like the most here are brian thomas 23 years old a and black block b pass block good strength solid speed and acceleration um not gonna be much of a run blocker but gonna have some good pass blocking abilities brett benedict's 23 years old Solid strength, good speed, great acceleration. Power, power guy pretty much exclusively. We do have injuries on, so injury and stamina you do have to take account. And then uh, Bryce Swinton, also like 21 years old. Solid athletes, solid abilities. Like these are my favorite players in the class. Not in the class, but of the guys we could actually draft. Defensive linemen, all we have is right ends no defensive tackles or left ends only right ends but we've got some solid players uh Kerry McLeod has an a which if you can get an a you just take that his athleticism isn't anything special but the fact that we can get an a power moves at some point in this draft is big time news kind of reminds me a little bit of uh dennis is it dennis allen from the bulls we were able to get a late round pick with a power moves, kind of an underside rusher. So he reminds me of that archetype. Um, got B block shed here. That could play defensive tackle for us um, with you know the elite strength. So got a couple options here. None that I'm too excited about. Uh, speed rusher here in Nick Townsend with just great speed, but he has poor acceleration though, which I feel like acceleration is equally important for edge rushers. Um, in terms of linebacker, we have Jerry Malecki, who not a great athlete. I just feel like he's solid all around. C awareness, C block should be tackled, B hit power. I see hit power, excuse me. Just doesn't have a lot of weaknesses. And then we have more of a pass coverage guy, excuse me, here in Zach Fraser. A little bit faster with great and greats. Um, just not probably going to be as good of a run stopping guy. Wasn't done with that, thank you. Corner, like I said, very bad class. <laughs> For UDFAs, there's one guy that I think could be worth something. And it's really just because he's got great, ski great speed, good ability, good agility. But D-man and C to F zones, not really comforting. Brandon Cooper at free safety, 21 years old with great speed. Um, Look like he's gonna have some good man coverage ability. Be block shot as well. Maybe he can play corner for us. And then Deshaun Barnes is one of my favorites. 
Um, great speed uh, with good agility, good acceleration, um, and A to C zone coverage, A to C awareness. So, uh, Deshaun Barnes is pretty high on my UDFA list. As far as kicker, um, there's a guy with A awareness and accuracy. His kick power is only decent, though, which was on the low end. It was decent to solid, I think. So, and then Eric Espinosa is one higher, but with B. So I don't know who you go with there, honestly. And then punter, there's nobody good. So that's the draft class. Um, in terms of draft strategy, it's trade down, trade down, trade down, trade down. I want to get a bunch of fourth round picks is basically my goal here. Um, just because I feel like fourth round is when the CPU starts to reach for players that could be UDFA ranked. Um, I've seen like two UDFA go UDFA guys go in the third round, so maybe we could start in the third. But I think stockpiling fourth round picks and just day three picks in general is the way to go in a franchise like this. And we can't have any trades that involve players whatsoever. That was the rule one, so we won't be doing that. But draft day trades, we will be doing a bunch of them. In this franchise, I will probably I'll limit myself to the trade down options. Like when you're on the clock, I'll probably limit myself to that and try to pick from the best of those. All right, here we are. We got the number one pick in the draft. Let's trade it away. I there is no reason to pay a UDFA uh, a number one overall pick salary at all. So we've got a first and a third this year, and a first next year's looking good. We can get 10, a two, and a four this year. Um, I feel like this one might be better, but I like the fact that we're getting three all in this draft with this Patriots pick. Uh, ooh, okay, so Patriot, I think Patriots and Ravens are giving us the two best offers. The thing is, they're... The reason this one looks good is because their next year is projected at 14, but they picked 27 this year. Probably not going to be as good. The fact that all three are in this draft with the Patriots is what's going to make me lean this, even though getting an extra first is typically the best way to go. First round picks are really actually not that good of assets for us. Their only, their only value is in the trade downs that they give us. So... Um, I want to keep trading down in the first this year and stop piling picks. We can get another second this year and a fourth next. Uh, we can get a one, a two, and a three all this year. Thank you, Raiders. I will accept that. Assuming now to the 21st pick, all you're going to see me doing for the first three rounds of this draft is trading back, back, back to this. Okay. We can get two twos and a four. It's kind of looking like the fair value here. I don't want a next year three. Um, I don't want a next year one. So it looks like this first one from the from the Browns is gonna be it. Two and a four this year and a two next year. Let's keep simulating and trading down. Once again on the clock. Um, we get two picks in this year's draft. We can get a two or three in this year, and then a seven this year as well. Seventh are valuable. Normally they're not, but in a franchise like this, they are. A two and a four. The seventh next year, I like that from the Eagles. Thank you very much. We will make that deal because it gives us a fourth round pick. I, th I feel like the fourth round picks are really what's very valuable because. You don't want to accidentally lose out on some of your guys. And I think to do that, you want fourth round picks. So now that they're coming in a lot, I kind of like this three picks this year. All for the Bills, I think, is about as good as we're going to get here. And just so you, know, you don't have to keep seeing this over and over and over again, um, I'll just let you know I am trading down all the way to round four, and I will see you in round four.
All right, here we are. Technically still in round three, but we're at the end of it. And I think it's time to start making some picks. Let's see what we ended up with with picks this year after all the trades. Um, got this pick. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven fourth round picks. One, two, three, four, five, five fifths, one sixth only. That's kind of surprising. And then uh, four sevenths. So. I wanted to kind of dominate the fourth round and we ended up accomplishing that. So um, let's start making our picks. And I think the first guy we want to secure here is Hudson Tennant, the guy that's going to be playing quarterback for us next year. Normal development, but 87 throw power, 74 speed, 84 acceleration. Not bad. Uh, hopefully we can develop him a little bit. And you know what, just because he was normal dev, I think the strategy here is going to be take multiple shots at every position. I'm just gonna, we're gonna draft Martin Guerrero too. If he ends up being uh, hidden dev, he can compete. Doesn't end up being hidden dev, but who knows, he might have a higher overall. So um, we'll see what happens there. In terms of who I wanna go to for next, I think my next favorite guy here was Deshaun Barnes. Let's bring him onto the squad. Still have yet to find a hidden dev, but your hidden dev hit rate is going to be a lot lower in a franchise like this. That's just how it is going to be. And then next guy, there's only one opportunity we had to get like an like an a rush move. We got hidden dev. Let's go. Carrie McLeod. Hopefully he wants to stay with us. Cause like I said, even in re-signing, we ha they have to have yellow plus interest. So hopefully he likes big cities or starting or something and not playing close to home because uh nobody's gonna have green interest on playing close to home because we're in freaking London. I think next up, let's go ahead and snag these. Receivers that we know are pretty good. Hidden Dev once again, two in a row. We are on fire here picking up these UDFAs. Let's go. Um, let's go back and take that other receiver. Let's see. Oh, nope. Not him. This would be a cheating pick if I picked him. Gotta toggle over to favorites. And kind of streak ends at two but the fact that we picked two in the UDFA is still pretty sick to me i think we start taking some of these offensive linemen that i really like let's start here with brian thomas he is normal dev but solid athleticism with some solid pass protecting ratings as well and we are gonna go right back to the offensive line. Well here, we didn't sign any in free agency. So I will be taking probably even more than five because you gotta assume that some of these guys that I'm drafting are just gonna be absolutely terrible. So I'll probably pick somewhere in the realm of eight. I don't know if I'll do them all in a row, but there were three guys that I for sure wanted. And so I'm, I'll take those three guys right now and maybe we'll pivot. None of those guys get hidden development. That's really sad, but um, you'd love to be able to get one of those guys to hidden dev. Um, I'd like to get this off ball linebacker that seemed like he was pretty solid here in Jerry Malecki. Let's bring him onto the squad. 84 speed, normal development. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't get another normal uh, hidden development for the rest of this draft. The fact that we got two, I think, is pretty good let's take our first running back here with alani winslow the receiving back with a little bit of speed on him 91 speed not bad at all i will take that and then just keep on chugging along we got a lot of picks to make here um i think we can go back to the defensive line now uh who was my second favorite oh this guy ended up being uh day three so we cannot take him he went up 41 spots. So originally he was available. I think B block shed, C power move, elite strength here from Jeff Edison makes him next up on the board. Get an interior guy with 90 strength. I'll take that for sure. And then time to move on. We've taken all of our fourth round picks. 
Let's move over to the fifth, where we have five picks. So we have, I think, 10 picks left in this draft. Um, let's take a look at my favorite sports, see if there's anybody that I for sure wanted that we haven't taken yet. Um, I think getting an edge rusher here in Nick Townsend is probably a good thing to focus on. So, no, it wasn't Kenny Billet. This wasn't, no, he's a run supper. It was Nick Townsend. So, you know, great, great speed with B finesse moves. Let's take him here. Um, 84 speed, 83 acceleration is pretty low, but uh, the speed's in a decent spot. So let's go ahead and continue. Let's take another offensive lineman. Let's see who looks good here. Um, I think Mike Young is looking pretty solid here. Yeah, with that kind of speed, let's take him. Normal development once again. But now we've drafted four offensive linemen. Again, I might just hammer this position, hoping that we can get at least one in development. But we also need to continue to round out a defensive line. So we'll do that. Can't take him. We've got to remember that so I don't accidentally do it later. I think we can get a B power moves here. It's like no, we, there's no chance for us to take a uh, finesse rush really is there. I think B tackle, B power move here. Nick Award will be our next pick. And we'll simulate about nine picks. Maybe we go ahead and take one of these tight ends. Now we haven't taken a tight end yet. Great speed here for George Howard and good acceleration. Doesn't look very good, but at least get some speed. 83 speed, 87 acceleration is not terrible for tight end. Nothing special. It's faster than the guy, and then we signed in free agency. So he's got that going for him. And then, oh boy, let's see. Is there a position we haven't hit yet that I wanted to? We still need to draft at least one more offensive lineman. Like I said, I'd like to get more. We have two off ball linebackers on the team. Let's go ahead and get Fraser. Just a little bit of speed there at linebacker. We do have Cashman who provides that speed, but um, I think we'll be running a 4-3. So uh, getting that third linebacker is important for us. Um, draft is starting to chug along really slowly here. But we... I might just finish out this, maybe one more running back. So let's see, we have five more picks and I want one to be a kicker and one to be a punter. So I only have three more. So I think I'm gonna go two offensive linemen and get ourselves another running back. Let's take a look at Vaughn Bell here. Goodness, he's terrible. Goodness, he's terrible. All these guys are trash, man. Oh, look at all those pores. I think Isaac Robinson's the last one we haven't looked at yet. Oh, easily the best, easily the best. So, no, I don't want to draft a third quarterback. I want to draft Isaac Robinson. Uh, normal dev, but I'm fine with that. Kind of give us the opportunity to have a two-back system, which is what I want. Uh, if there's not like an elite running back, I'd rather have two that you can depend on. And then I'm going to take the kicker with A, awareness and accuracy. Hopefully we can get a hidden dev here, no? Too bad. And then I might just take that other kicker and move one of them to punter. Um, and then finish out with a couple of offensive linemen and call it a day. Let's see what power does Torres have. Solid, so the same as him, but he has better accuracy. So we'll go with Eric Espinosa here. No hidden developments in quite a while. Got two in a row, and I was thinking, hey, we might have a really good draft. 
like I said, I still think two in a draft where you're only picking UDFAs is pretty good. But um, I was hoping for more. We'll just say that. So now we got offensive linemen here. Oh, this guy looks good. Mark Wendell. Normal dev once again. And then our last pick. Um, which one looks best of these offensive linemen? We have A awareness. We're guaranteed A awareness. I think we just take that. Let's go. 21 years old as well. Man, we took seven shots at offensive linemen. Couldn't get one in there. That's unfortunate. But that concludes the draft. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the draft recap. I'm not going to worry too much about editing players' um, faces and stuff for this because it is a one-off rebuild. And I would just make this recording even longer. So we started with a 63 and a 61 overall quarterback. So the quarterback ends up being that good. Quarterback might end up being a position that we end up paying in free agency just because I feel like it's going to be so difficult to get a UDFA quarterback that's going to be successful, honestly. Sean Barnes being a 69 overall is nice. And we got a 70 hidden in Kerry McLeod, 70 hidden in Kedrick Richmond. Um, taking a look, we got another 70 here in Jeremy Milliken. I thought he was going to be pretty good. So that's so far tied for the best overall that we were able to snag here in this draft. Um, and that ends up this Isaac Robinson pick ended up coming in clutch as he is 70 overall really late into the draft as well. Honestly, he's got good catching too. This is actually a really solid pick. His carrying is a little low as is his break tackle. I might just give him all the carries. What's Lonnie Winslow 66? He might just be a bell cow back for us, honestly. But none of the offensive linemen are particularly good, uh, which is unfortunate because we spent seven picks on them. <laughs> but that's just the reality when you're forced to pick undrafted free agents. So um, I do want to see that defensive tackle. So 79. Oh, there's also 81 freezes. So I don't think this is a generational guy. But it, oh, he's incredibly good. Whether or not he's generational is kind of irrelevant. This is a freaking solid pick by the, let's see, just superstar. So not generational, but a holy crap good pick regardless. Um, let's see. No. This safety was the best guy. 84 zone coverage off rip is nuts. With 86 catching? This guy's got to be generational. 84 zone and 86 catching? He's just started. Okay, whatever. I don't know what I'm talking about. That's insanely high catching. You must have had a college story that increases catching which just made his overall go through the roof that's nuts that's awesome that's an awesome pick for uh jacksonville there kind of jealous of a couple of these defensive picks i've been trying to get like some really sick defenders in my bulls franchise forever and the draft just keeps generating more and more good offensive players but um i'll have to rearrange some positions and stuff uh, so we can get a full starting team, but probably still going to even have some zero overall players starting here and there across the board. But we're actually a team this year. Can we play with a win here in year one slash year two? I'm going to call it year one, though, because it's the first year that we didn't have just a straight up zero overall roster. So how will we do in year one? Let's go ahead and find out. All right. Here we are. End of year one. We've got a Buccaneers Broncos Super Bowl, but we went one in 16 on the year. We got our first win here of the video. Let's see who was the team that we beat. A 27-17 victory over the Eagles. 
Come on, man. Why do they gotta do my Eagles dirty like this, bro? I guess this probably this was an old roster, so the Eagles and like Jalen Hurts isn't as good as he is in the current roster or anything like that. But uh, one in sixteen. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of our player stats now that we actually have players that have stats that are worth tracking. So Hudson Tennant, rookie quarterback, thirty-seven hundred yards, fourteen touchdowns, nine picks. Honestly, not bad. Guerrero came in uh, for I guess three attempts. But Isaac Robinson had three yards of carry. It's not great, but he had a terrible offensive line, and he's still developing, so I'm not too bad about it. Only one fumble despite some bad carrying. Kendrick Richmond out here had a 1,000-yard season despite being in this terrible offense. Six touchdowns as well. Um, in terms of sacks, we have uh, Bryce Swinton allowed the most. Well, neither of our tackles was very good, which is unsurprising. Kerry McLeod led us with four sacks, picks, four from Murphy Bunting. Jerry Malecki here with 159 tackles, three picks. Is that rookie of the year status? Derwin James had a couple himself. Honestly, for Derwin James, maybe not quite as good of a year as you would hope, considering we just paid him a metric F ton of money. Um, Hunter Heller goes 12 for 13 with a long of 55. Over 50 yards for our punter as well. So not so bad from us. Let's go ahead and look at some awards. See if we won anything. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. One second. Yearly awards. Let's go. Uh, didn't win MVP. No, no uh, surprise there. Offensive player of the year. No uh, so we got Offensive Rookie of the Year. We had the top five vote-getters there, so that's pretty good. And then Defensive does go to George Malecki. No surprise there. And then in terms of top players of the positions, I don't imagine we're going to have really anybody here. We had the best kick. So that should be a dev up for Hunter Heller, which is awesome for him. Let's go ahead and take a look at the status of all the overalls and stuff. I did manually upgrade everyone over 70 overall to try to get them to be a little bit more balanced. Of course, morale is a big loss right now, but we've got Tenant up to 66 overall. Richmond up to Superstar. I imagine that's with the Offensive Rookie of the Year. So he had Star Dev, now has Superstar after his Rookie of the Year campaign. Um, still has a long way to go in terms of route runner, but um, getting superstar dev will certainly help. And defensively, we now have okay McLeod. Did he come in as a superstar? Because this season didn't feel like he just got superstar. I won't complain. Not even a little bit. And then Maleki gets he was normal, so he dev up twice this year. So you got Star Dev for just his stats, and then Superstar for Spencer Rookie of the Year. He was the NFL Tackles leader this year. Awesome stuff from a guy who should have been a UDFA. Um, this is sick. Awesome. The double upgrade has the same face scan or whatever as our boy Kurt Banks as well. And then Edison goes up to star. So quite a few dev ups for the boys. You like to see it. Um, offensively, not so much, but uh, we did get one up to superstar. So maybe we should focus a little bit on the offense in this second off season. So let's get into it. So Trayvon Diggs wants to join the squad. Um, we're investing a lot in the secondary, but once we get this signing done, assuming we get it done, of course, we won't really have to touch the secondary for a while. DJ Chark is going to be the next guy here that we offer to, 27 years old. He's actually the second highest overall of somebody with at least yellow interest. I think maybe for the future, we have to extend it to at least maybe orange, because that... 
opens a lot of possibilities. But hey, this is supposed to be, you know, a challenge at the end of the day, but holy smokes, nobody has yellow interest in this team or this free agency. John Simpson here, 27 years old, 74 overall guard. Um, the very player friendly thing is only just over 3 million, so I'm comfortable with that. Only 25 years old here for Caleb Von Chason. I don't love it, but my options are very limited in free agency. I would have loved if Nick Bosa was interested in us. I would have easily paid him the, you know, very player friendly or even Rashawn Gary. But even if we changed our scheme to fit him, um, it still would only be orange. So that's the tough, tough times we live in. So I couldn't even find five players that I wanted to sign in this free agency. These four, and I honestly only feel good about these two. <laughs> Oh, uh, the whole yellow interest minimum has certainly added an element of challenge. Maybe we change that fifth rule if we do this in Men 24, but that's what this was for to kind of see the possibility of a franchise like this. We have everyone evaluated. Everybody said yes. Again, no surprise. We they had interest in us and we still way overpaid them. So secondary looking good. We've got Derwin James, the rookie that we drafted with it was pretty good. He's 70 overall. Diggs, Bunting, and Greedy Williams. I feel like that's an NFL caliber secondary. So at least we're good in one area of our football team. Now we got to let everywhere else catch up. Welcome to the year two draft. Once again, we have the number one overall pick. No surprise. But of course, just like last year, I'll be trading. Don't want to just bore you with like 20 trades until we get to the later parts of the draft. So um, I'll just speed through these trades and see when we start making our picks. All right, we're here at the end of the second round and we can't make any more trades because we have too many draft picks. So we're just gonna start taking some players um, and deal with it. I guess you can only trade down so much in the drafts. So we must have, I, I, I wish the projected picks would actually work in this game, but they don't. So let's go ahead and see where our picks are at. Um, we've got, yeah, okay. Yeah, we have a lot of picks. I can see why they don't want to give us any more. And then next year, we're already set up. So I think maybe starting next year, we're just going to have to get out of the first round because the first round is quite expensive, but the second round really isn't. So um, the whole trading into the fourth round thing, just it gets, they pile up really quickly going from the first to the fourth. So you just can't do that for eternity. So we've got a lot of players. Um, let's start here with Matt Roach, a good slot receiver, 90 speed. Uh, he'll kick off the day. He's got a kick return as well. Um, didn't preview the draft just because basically everybody that we like we're probably going to take. I really like, uh, I think it was Dante May. He's not much of an athlete. Oh no, he is an athlete. Yeah, okay. I was thinking of a different player. A trucking, A break tackle, B vision with athleticism. Yes, please give me that. I don't care about the normal dev. I think that will be kind of our second back along with the guy that we drafted last year with like one of our last picks. It was a, one of our best picks. Um, I found a tight end that I thought was really good as well. I think it's Cole McDonald. He is 24 years old, which sucks, but... I think he's going to be pretty good. Hidden development. 
Chachinga, 24 years old, is terrible. And a video where I was doing a full-on franchise, I don't know if I would have drafted him just because 24 is really old for a rookie. But um, works out for us here. The draft just broke for me. There we go. And um, I also just want to keep taking a bunch of swings of the offensive line this year, but there's also a defensive tackle that I want to take. We kind of really need defensive tackle. So we'll take KC Harold here and be happy about that. I wouldn't mind taking swings at quarterback, seeing if we can't hit on one. So there's two that I like in this draft. We'll take them both here. Bo Griffin is first. Normal dev. Kind of looks similar to Tenant, if we're being honest. And we're up once again. So we will take the other quarterback on our board here. The Kurt Banks clone. And we're over four in terms of finding a hidden dev quarterback. So far, taking two in each of the drafts, we'll probably continue to take one until we get a hidden dev or somebody that's a good overall. I take that too. I don't know if we need to take another um, quarterback here, but we might take this. Oh, he's a day three guy. He, we can't take him. Let's. All these guys are day three guys. How are they on my board? Did they all go up? Nope. I just make make sure I don't. Uh, draft these receivers. Almost made a mistake there. I just, I'm just assuming that all the guys on my board are, you know, eligible to be drafted. So I, hopefully I, I haven't made any mistakes thus far by picking somebody that's actually projected day three. But let's continue on through the draft here. Um, uh, we are going to draft so many offensive linemen in this draft. It's going to be nuts. Gotta hopefully hit on a hidden dev eventually. Just because I feel like edge rusher, we got Chase on, and the guy that we drafted last year that's not superstar dev. We got a superstar dev off ball linebacker. Secondary is good. I just feel like offense needs more work, and I can't draft any of these. Um, receivers and we already drafted the one receiver that we could take so kind of it's time to just throw some darts at offensive line until they stick I think that running back is going to be good um, hidden, I mean normal dev isn't great though but um, I'm drafting all the offensive linemen on our board one's going to be hidden right one of them eventually probably not honestly most draft you uh, linemen usually aren't all that great, so we might just be drafting 12 hidden dev, I mean, normal dev line in this draft. Only got four chances left at hidden dev. Still evading us. Oh boy. This rebuild might... What did I label it? The zero overall impossible rebuild? It might truly be impossible to... Uh, Build a good team here. Good speed there at 70, but still normal dev. And the offensive line is just so crucial to get in dev. There was a couple offensive linemen that had orange interest in us that I would have signed um, in the offseason had that been available to us. And with only one of the offensive linemen I had on my board left, we have still not drafted a hidden dev offensive lineman. It's nuts. This will be more than 10 swings at the bat with zero hidden devs. Easily. Come on! Normal dev once again, man. We are not having any luck in that department. So... Time to just chug on and move on to other positions, I guess. Um, let's go let's snag another off-ball linebacker. 89 speed for Sean Sands. Let's come up. Let's pick. Um, 
We got B power moves here with Isaiah Knowles, 23 years old. Let's take him. Normal dev once again. So we got one hidden dev. I am having a sneaking suspicion he will be the only one we'll get there in this draft, though. It just seems like it's not going our way. Um, somebody else I liked. Got some edge rushers. We don't super need it, but we also don't need safety. We could take, I actually like this UDFA tight end class. So let's just take more of them. We got another hidden dev. So sick UDFA tight end class this draft. I was going through it and I thought running back was strong and I thought tight end was strong with this UDFA class for sure. Um, I also thought those two quarterbacks were pretty decent, but I thought the same last year and and that didn't turn out to be the case. Um, should we just take the other tight end? Just go see if we can go three for three hidden devs. That that would have been nuts. If all three UDFA tight ends that we liked were were hidden dev. Um, unsurprisingly, though, that is not the case. But maybe this gives us what we need. We could just release Nick Gates, save a little bit of cap space. Even though it's not like there's much, we have much use for the cap space at this point. Let's take some. Let's take another shot at off ball linebacker here Ari Breston hidden dev all right so we've now actually surpassed right after I said you know what we're probably not getting another hidden dev we draft two more two of them being a tight end that was interesting so um now let's go edge rusher here we'll go with Carlos Hunter normal development on him we are just Wrapped in everybody here, baby. And another shot here at edge. Another normal development. I mean, if we got in development, we could I could see somebody starting over Kilavon, Chase on. He's not like he's spectacular or anything. He was just one of the four players above 70 overall, less than 30 years old, that actually wanted to come to our squad. It was a very low number. So offensive and defensive line, we spent a lot of picks on it this draft. Did not hit on hidden dev on any of them, but other positions were actually pretty successful. I feel like we got either, you know, normal dev players that I'm confident are going to be good or hidden dev players. So... I think overall second draft for it being, you know, the restrictions that we've placed on ourselves, I think it's going to be pretty successful. I guess we go with another running back here. Uh, let's go Sergio Parker, 23 years old, 91 speed, normal development. And how many seventh rounders do we have? This is our last pick. Good, because it's the last player on our board. It's actually draftable because those receivers are on day three guys. So three running backs, all normal dev, but confident we'll get at least one player that's worthy of being kind of the second back for us. Um, confidence is going to be the first guy. I think he's going to be pretty good, actually, as a power back. So. There is draft number two. Let's let us simulate out and find out um, just how good we did. So Matt Roach, 68 overall. Dante May, like I said, I'm, I was pretty confident he was going to be good. 71. Now the highest overall we have drafted, 86 trucking, 86 stiff arm, 82 juke move. This guy is going to be our main back, and then the other guy's going to be our receiving back. And I think we now have secondary figured out, and I think we have our backfield figured out for the foreseeable future. We actually did get a 66 overall quarterback here in Adam Mann. So maybe he starts, because I think that's the same overall that our incumbent quarterback has, but he's been in the league for a year. So Nate Silas was terrible. Our 24-year-old guy that we drafted was also terrible. 
But I want to see. So Haas is a 65. Ross. Henry Ross, not Haas. 65 overall, hidden dev tight end. The first tight end was 68 hidden dev. So solid if unspectacular. You see Harold goes 68. So only one player at 70. Okay, and then the last guy, Eric Cofield, as well. So drafted two 70 plus halfbacks. Uh, nothing else got to 70 overall, but still like the draft, I think. I'm comfortable with the swings that we took. And when you can only draft UDFA players, your draft passes are only going to be so good. So um, I'll change some positions around and I'll see you at the end of year two to see how we did. All right. Season two is at its end here and we improved to five and 12. Still obviously not a good team, but things are starting to develop for us. And these overalls are actually, I haven't done the upgrades for this year yet. But um, we got the Chargers Cowboys Super Bowl. Don't like seeing the Cowboys in the Super Bowl twice in three years. Uh, not in the MVP or Coach of the Year conversation. No surprise there. We need to be looking at NFC here. Um, didn't win a Player of the Year. We had second and third place, but Miles Till ends up winning Rookie of the Year. That's annoying. Didn't have anybody in the race for anything else. So Trevon Diggs ends up being second place for DB of the year for us. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these player stats for the year. Uh, rookie Adam Mann at 66 overall, ended up being the highest rated quarterback by a little bit. So he, Goes 4,600 yards, 30 touchdowns, 16 picks. Nice to see a bump in production there. Dante May uh, got 210 carries, three and a half yards per carry, eight touchdowns. Alani Winslow, of course, still had a roll. DJ Chark and Kendrick Richmond both got just shy of 1,100 yards. Richmond had nine touchdowns. Then rookies, a uh, hidden dev. I don't know if it's star. I'm just assuming it's star dev. Tight end McDonald's got eight, 23, and four. In terms of blocking, much better at avoiding sacks this year, which you like to see. Sack production, um, nothing great, particularly out of Kerry McLeod. That's really disappointing, TFL. Uh, so, come on, Chase, that looks like a solid get for us. Digs with five picks you like to see. And tackles, Maleki was a lot down from what he was last year, but could just be because the defense wasn't on the field as much because our offense actually did stuff this year. So uh, year two in the books. This will be a five-year rebuild or, or a, until we win a Super Bowl, whichever happens first. That's just all I have time for today. So um, we got three more years to, to turn this team around. Um, Let's go ahead and take a look at development traits at the end of year two. I do have de dev trait regression on so people can regress. Richmond does regress back down to star. And him and McDonald are our only star dev players. And all of our superstars regress. That sucks. Um, I'd like to see reach. I feel like uh, guys who come into the league should have Probably two years. I'd say in year three, if you haven't broken out yet, then you regress. Um, rookies, I always reverse. So rookie should never decrease in dev. Year two is kind of borderline. I'd personally say don't regress in year two, um, but I could see why men would do it like they did in this. But um, I'll upgrade these players and then we'll hop into free to see. Hopefully there's a little bit more options for us in this free agency is we do have some money look like it's going to be another year where just the interest is not there from the free agents uh, michael pierce is the best free agent that actually has interest in us offering him three years at the age of 32 isn't my favorite idea but i mean if we're looking for a guy that wants to come play for our team what do you want me to do we're all the way down to 80 overall and still nobody else has yellow interest in us so we can get one impact player from this free agency. I'm going to go do it. 
I also want to make a push to actually make our offensive line better this year, even though like 10 years a year for Christensen isn't a good deal. I got to start doing something to improve this offensive line because the draft isn't being kind to us at that position. I'm also going to sign James Bradbury here just because I think by the time this contract is done, he will have the mentor tag, which will help in case we want to re-sign Sean Murphy Bunting. Um, that'll actually get his interest up to the spot it needs to be. And that's literally it. That's all I can think of in terms of players that would actually help this team. So we're going to sign those three guys and that's going to be it for free agency in year three. All right, here at round two, pick 13, we've already found the spot where we can't trade back anymore in this draft. So now is when we will start making picks. And so let's get that process underway. I'm really interested in maybe making a change at quarterback again, just with Harry Kaysen. He's not very great athleticism wise, but A awareness and short accuracy is very intriguing to me. Ends up with only normal dev, but he might be the highest overall yet. I guess we'll have to see if that ends up being the case. And then right back up here, uh, let's take the best receiver available. Guaranteed round three to four talents. Always like to take the higher talents as early as we can right back up on the clock still here in round two why does the draft board suck in this game um i think we need some bodies over a corner and this is actually a pretty decent corner udfa class and i th think my favorite here is rashad stevens let's take him now hit a dev let's go um, one thing I did with this draft that I'm going to talk about right now is with, with the exception of the quarterbacks, because I had this idea offensive line, I did not look at the athleticism scores for anybody in this draft. I am basing everything on just their ratings because I figured we're drafting UDFA players. So if we're drafting athletes, they're probably not going to be talented. So let's maybe focus on actual ratings and see if that gives us a good draft so far it's given us one good um good pick at corner for sure Deontay williams up next he ends up normal dev so that's unfortunate coming up here now we have reached round three and we will continue to just take some shots. We also need some bodies of safety. And I like what I see here from uh, Heath Woody. Two potential A's. And hidden dev again. And who knows if I would have had him on my board based off of the lettuces. And so it looks like maybe going off ratings and just keeping a blind eye to athleticism might be the way to get more hidden devs once you get down to this part of the draft board. So uh, let's go here and select Alani Gross and normal dev. Still looking for that first normal dev offensive lineman. Still going to draft a ton, even if they all just end up getting released because they're the lowest overalls on the team. Um, we're in year three. I don't have a single hit dev offensive lineman. That hurts my soul. I love drafting offensive linemen in men 23. So it just seems unacceptable not to have any on my team. But um, I think we can go back to the safety well here just to make sure we have enough bodies there. We'll get hit normal dev there, excuse me. And we'll simulate to round three. And I think this is when we start just taking shots at offensive line. Let's do it. 
I don't know if there's really anybody else that I can expect to start except for offensive line at this point in the draft. So go ahead and start taking these shots. Normal dev. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I would not have drafted that guy. 77 strength and 59 speed. That's horrible. That's trash. Guarantee that guy's getting released. Normal dev with those athleticisms. But I'm hoping as long as it can get us one hidden, it'll be worth it in the end. Derek McMichael's not even a bad athlete. Despite the normal dev. Once again, you know, this ignoring the physicals was a strategy to maybe pick up a hidden dev offensive lineman. But so far, it's working better at the other positions. And it hasn't worked for us yet on the offensive line. But we still have a lot of picks. I will use the rest of my picks on offensive line. If there's enough offensive line available to do that, I'll do it. I will do it without any shame. I will sit here and I'll spend 10 minutes releasing offensive linemen in, in the preseason, if that's what it takes. Let's go ahead and who actually looks really good. Somebody like uh, Kevin Rivera. Nope. God, it has a really good speed, though. Strength is in an incredible spot. So yeah, I'm kind of getting I'm kind of getting surprised with a lot of these athletic ratings. Um, but let's see. Well, this looks really good. Let's see. That looks pretty good. I like this top four. Still, man, how many offensive line and will I draft before I get one hidden dead? Probably infinite. I wouldn't be surprised if we go all five years and I draft all these offensive linemen and never get one. I think this is a pretty good looking profile here from Clay Monroe. Oh man, this is unfortunate. In terms of using this style of uh, this, this challenge for a long-term series, the one reason I would say maybe I wouldn't do it is that my favorite part of sports gaming is the draft. And like that, the fact that we had to pass on that defensive tackle in year one, I just, I would rather, I like drafting good players. That's my favorite part of, of franchise gaming. And so the fact that that's kind of taken away like this and I'm sitting here drafting 20 offensive linemen, trying to get one good one, just takes away from, I think, what would make me want to play a franchise long-term, right? I want to take this sick looking defensive tackle and I want to see his career develop in front of my eyes. That's my favorite part of playing Madden. I like this guy right here, let's take him. Good athlete, good athlete. For sure, just not a hidden dev lineman. Wonder if we even have enough picks to take all these guys that are on my board. Um, let's take this guy next. We know nothing about him. It means he's gonna be hidden. Dang it, I was hoping to speak it into existence. Oh boy. I wonder if, I wonder how many linemen this is up to. I think I took seven in the first year, so I'm like 10 in the second, and I've taken a crap ton today. Another pretty good athlete there, but still no hidden developments. So far, my strategy has not made any difference in terms of drafting a hidden dev. UDFA linemen. I know they exist. I know they're really rare, but hidden for UDFA players is just rare in general. But we've had a better shot at most every other position. I haven't got one at running back, but we've gotten really good players. Goodness. 74 strength on an offensive lineman. It's a tight end, but he's too weak to play offensive line, too slow to play tight end. Goodness. 
just a really bad player. All right. Just gonna keep going, baby. Now we're getting into some really bad players. I didn't mean to press that button. And I think a franchise like this, I think has a better chance of succeeding, or a rebuild like this, has a better chance of succeeding when I'm playing the games than when I'm just simulating them. Because you'll get more, you know, weekly breakout scenarios, right? And you'll probably get, uh, at least on, on offense, you know, we'll focus more on the player that's actually good at football instead of, you know, spreading the ball around. And so, I'm having, I have a feeling through, this is your three of five, that we're not gonna be a Super Bowl team in the next three regular seasons, unless like year four or five free agency is nuts. Um, but I could always be proven wrong. We still have a chance, at, uh, of course, uh, winning this franchise. Dude, that guy's a good player. But can I get one hit in depth? I've drafted 20 offensive linemen at this point. I'm almost sure of it. I should have counted. But this is ridiculous how many offensive linemen I've drafted and we've not gotten one. And this favorite page just work, please. We got an A impact block. This is ridiculous. going to be there's going to be one offensive lineman that we don't have the picks to draft and it's going to be him isn't it no we only have two left and i know i have at least two so every we did it hit it dev offensive line justin alvarado like the 25th guy drafted holy crap oh he's probably going to be like 56 overall i do not care anyway who else should we draft now that uh, I drafted until I got a hidden dev offensive lineman. Should I just draft the other one? And I, dude, just work. Goodness. All we have is backups, really. I'm not in love with any of these players. Yeah, let's just go for it. See if we can get two in a row after 24 straight normals. Probably a little bit ambitious. But uh, I drafted so many offensive linemen. In this, in this draft, holy crap. Let's go ahead and take a look at them. Or let's try again to go ahead and take a look at them. So that is the highest uh, overall quarterback we drafted. Previously, it was 66. Um, honestly, I wouldn't mind starting a rookie quarterback again. Just get another shot at potentially getting rookie of the year because that because we haven't gotten a quarterback with Rick, with uh, with a rookie of the year, which obviously is going to be a massive help to their development. We have an offensive lineman with wearing 31 because I've drafted so many freaking offensive linemen. <laughs> That's nuts. Okay, well, 65 overall, that guy's gonna start just because of his in development. So even though we will take a short term, probably hit 69 overall from Zach Booker is good. But not a ton of high overalls just because we were drafting offensive linemen the whole time, which Makes sense. I wanted a hidden dev offensive lineman, and it, it took a massive commitment to get it, but we finally got it. And then maybe a starting quarterback, maybe a third receiver, um, and then should probably find find a spot for these for these defensive backs that I got on the squad as well. All right, end of season three. We actually regressed down to four and thirteen. I'm not super surprised, just because. Um, our team didn't really improve <laughs> for being honest which is just the thing with this franchise it, 
might be too difficult at the end of the day. If we're being 100% honest, it might be too difficult. Um, one thing I want to do is I want to put Dallas playbooks on, though, because they have now reached the Super Bowl in three out of the four years here. Um, Madden has always loved Dallas. They always give Dallas more credit than they deserve. So who am I to argue? Let's uh, put their play playbooks on. Two of the most oh, OP playbooks in the game, Cowboys Chiefs. So let's see if we won any awards. Um, Carson Wentz wins MVP with the Bucks. The Bucks is by far the most overpowered if you need passing stats. It's stupid. If I could request one change for... Uh, we didn't even get top three for our quarterback rookie of the year. Can I just get a rookie quarterback to win rookie of the year? That's like, we desperately need that in this franchise. We need the rookie of the year boost for quarterback, but I guess we might be drafting the quarterback again and starting him. I just might need to do it until we freaking get a quarterback to win it. Um... If I can make one request, can we please make playbooks not dick? Can we make ratings matter more than playbooks when it comes to stats? Playbooks should play a role. Carson Wentz and Jacoby Brissett and some third round rookie shouldn't be winning MVP for the Bucks at quarterback. It's ridiculous. Uh, one of my biggest, easily my biggest complaints about men is um, how much playbooks dictate simulation. And so let's go ahead and take a look at resigns because we might actually have some this year to do. This game is taking forever. We don't have we don't have a single person to resign. So I guess next year's when we will start some resigns. Uh, let's take a look at the squad as it currently stands. No reward, no awards, no new upgrades. But here's how it stands. This is after three years of me doing everything I can to make the team better. I just think it might. This might be too limiting and I think honestly my rule that I implemented is a part of it um see this we had him starting and he went down to normal dev I'm not allowing it rookies should not dev down ever never Rookies keep their dev into their second year 100% of the time. Um, this, is like, this is what we look like after three years. And I know the original um, suggestion was for a series idea. I think a series would help a little bit, like I stated previously, but this is difficult. This is a difficult rebuild for sure. Um, we the only way we have any success is if we actually have a free agency pool that of people that wants to come with to us, which is really our only shot at this point is big market start or scheme fit. That's kind of the only things that are positives for our team. So um, uh, I'm not very helpful. So I'm here at free agency. Not a single soul has yellow interest in the 80s. Just kidding, one does. A corner, the one position we don't need. Look at, look at what we're dealing with. So I think I screwed myself with this rebuild um, with forcing myself to only sign yellow. I thought it would be 
I guess if we wanted to, we should have done like Houston or something, right? Because then you have warm weather, you have um, no state income tax. Some people will have close to home. Like there's just so many things when I chose London that we still have, you know, big market. So I think I kind of screwed myself picking London here because well, there's just nothing that anybody likes to come here. Super Bowl chase, no. Franchise quarterback, Super Bowl chase. Close to home, it wouldn't have happened here. But, it, you know, it's just... There's nothing that anybody likes about our team, and so nobody's yellow. Um, I'm honestly getting to the point just because we're never signing anyone to, to already chalk this rebuild up as a failed attempt. It's, I'm getting close because none of these signing, like Quiz Watkins isn't going to push us from 4-13 and 13 to a Super Bowl contender. Uh, I think I sabotaged myself with the fifth rule in this rebuild. You know what? Just because I don't actually have time to record anymore, this rebuild, like scouting UDFAs takes forever, forever. Um, and this rebuild has taken me a lot longer than I, I, I had guessed. I thought I had time to do five years. I'm going to have to qualify this as a failed rebuild. rebuild. So congrats to Monkey50 for giving me what truly was an impossible rebuild. Um, I'm always up for new challenges. I do think part of the reason it failed is that I kind of sabotaged myself with the fifth rule of requiring yellow interest to be able to be signing people, plus moving to a location where that just wasn't a good free agent destination. I should have chosen Houston. I think that would have helped me be able to sign more free agents and maybe it would be possible then. I'd be down to try this again in the future and may, and go full five years. The reason I'm comfortable pulling the pin now, apart from the fact that uh, I I don't just don't have any more time to record, is that we're not two years away. We we suck, and and Michael Pierce just went down five overall. Um, no, no free agents have yellow interest in us. So we're not going to get better for free agency. And in three years, we drafted like four people that are 70 overall. So we're not going to get any immediate impact rookies. We're not two years away. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if I did five years from this point if we weren't a Super Bowl team by the end. So um, thank you to Monkey50 for the video idea. Again, I'm down to try this again in Men24. Just because only being able to draft UDFAs takes so much fun out of the draft for me. I don't know if I'd turn this into a full series. Could I imagine it being like a mini series where there's an episode a season or something like that? Absolutely. So also, if you have any other challenge rebuilds on Madden or MLB The Show, the other game that I'm playing right now, hit me up and I will be happy to try it. Hopefully it won't take me two months plus like I did for this one. Uh, it just, the request came at just kind of a time when I was starting up a new series in Madden and then my Madden content lost steam. My Madden content gets about a third of the views that my MLB show, uh, MLB The Show content is getting right now. So I just decided to start focusing a lot more on MLB The Show. I'm having a blast learning basically baseball through a video game. That's been really fun. But uh, thanks again, Monkey50. Sorry that I couldn't turn this into a series, but uh, hopefully, you know, th uh, this challenge rebuild maybe with an alteration of the fifth rule that i made up it can be a staple on the channel in the future that's all i have for this episode i'll be back soon with another probably an mlb the show or brooklyn bulls but uh i will see you then <laughs>